Hello everyone, this is your friend and tutor Manas and I'm back with another video on mechanics of solids and you know very well that this entire week we'll be talking about rather solving problems based on fixed beams and so is the case in today's video. Well, this is a fixed beam, some portion of it, rather half portion of it is loaded with a sort of uniformly distributed load. You can clearly see um, this has a magnitude of 40 kilonewton per meter. That means in one meter the total load acting is 40 kilonewton therefore for 4 meters it is going to be 4 times of 40 that is going to be 160 anyway don't have to worry about all those things we will deal with all of that in a very simplified manner but what you need to do is you need to watch this video right till the end okay so 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 where is my pen let me gather all of these things okay done so before watching this video if you haven't seen my previous video based on fixed beams, I've explained each and everything with absolute detail. Go ahead and watch that video. If you haven't seen that, well, the link to that video can be found in the description down, down below. Go ahead and check it out. Today, let us start. And the first thing which we need to work out is the moment at the fixed ends. This is a fixed beam. Okay, so there is a fixed support at the left end of the beam that is A and at the right end. So there are going to be fixing moments of hogging nature this way and this way we call it MA and MB I'm gonna let you know all of those things don't worry right the other thing which we need to calculate is the reaction at fixed support so obviously there is going to be some reaction over here because of these loads these loads are vertical in nature and therefore there are going to be reactions at A that is RA and at B that is RB and apart from that once all of that is done once you have framed the slope and deflection equations you can go ahead and put the value of X is equal to what half of the beam X is equal to 4 to get the deflection at the center all of these things will be explained in a very simplified manner don't worry keep watching and better to take a pen and a piece of paper and try to solve this problem along with me now there are two approaches approach number one in approach number one what we'll try to do is we'll take this section from the from left from left i mean to say we're going to take this section from this end a and the second approach I'm going to let you know both the approaches is where we are going to take this section from the not left but section from the right that is we are going to take this section from the end B when you take this section from the left okay the moment MX has to be taken as anti-clockwise when you take this section from the right the moment MX has to be taken in the clockwise sense remember these two things very important this second approach the solution of this entire problem with this second approach has been the snapshot of the solution has been provided at the end of the video for let's say 10 seconds and this approach one well i'm going to demonstrate it to you right now okay so let us do a section from the left end and let's see how things work out right here we go so guys uh, what you need to do initially you need to take a section and let's say let's say and you have to do the section in such a way that almost all the forces be it the point load or the uniformly distributed load they should be covered so when you take this section from the left if you do this section over here then only UDL will be covered if you do this section over here then this AT Newton also will be covered but if you take this section somewhere along this part all these portions will be covered up so what we'll try to do is let me just make this properly let me just make this so this is the beam this is the beam and we shall go until we reach here so somewhere here we are taking the section somewhere here I'm not drawing it over here so there is the section right now remember one more thing whenever you do the section as we've done from the left so section has been done at a distance of X this way okay now here since this section has been done from the left so bending moment at this point at this juncture has to be taken in the anti-clockwise sense let's say this is mx and obviously at a and b there are going to be fixing moments so the fixing moments will be of a sort of hogging nature and this is going to be represented by m a simply and apart from this there is going to be a reaction a reaction and this is end a so let's say that this reaction is represented by r a simply and anything else yeah so there is this UDL okay I'll come to that AT let me bring this downwards AT 
ब्यूटिफुल दिस इज एट जीरो किलो न्यूटन नाउ नाउ कम्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पार्ट गाइज इफ यू वॉच इफ यू वॉच देर इज दिस यूडीएल इज इट इट दिस यूडीएल इज देर ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दिस थम रोल बेटर टू नोट दिस डाउन प्लीज नोट दिस डाउन इन योर कॉपीज यूडीएल मस्ट फिनिश यूडीएल मस्ट फिनिश ऑन दिस सेक्शन and this is something that we actually study in deflection of beams okay especially when applying the macaulay's method udl must finish on the section right agar yes hai if there is yes then no issues no issues no problem if no if it does not if it does not so we have the section over here and the udl is actually not cutting the section not finishing on the section then in that case if the answer is no you need to extend the udl Udl from top and bottom. So this is a thumb rule which you need to follow. You will understand these things. So we made a section over here. So we did this section. Actually, we did this section over here. Okay. So that all these forces shall be considered. And in that process, we saw that this section is actually not cutting this Udl. If we had taken the section from the right, then there would have been no issues. And the solution. from that approach has been provided at the end of the discussion at the end of the video go ahead and watch that also no problem so when you do this section between d and b all the forces are covered up but the udl is not cutting okay the udl is not cutting in that case what you need to do is you need to extend the udl from top and bottom so from top let us extend this not here not here okay so let me let me just do this so this is the udl beautiful and from the bottom from the bottom and that is where where have we extended it from the extension was from this point so from the bottom also the extension in the opposite sense is going to be from here so makes no difference this is going to cancel this out but still in order to apply the macaulay method effectively we need to do this approach okay we need to follow this so that is absolutely done and the magnitude of this load we know very well well guys this is nothing but 40 kn per meter and apart from that anything else no no we can go ahead so let us try to frame the moment equation what we'll try to do is we'll try to take the moment about this point okay moment about this point let's start solving moment since it's a clear cut case of a static beam moment about this point is equal to 0 so all the forces with respect to this point and their distances have to be worked out from here itself anyway so so let us start from uh, mx itself so mx this is sort of an anti clockwise nature so let me just put a positive sign so this is going to be mx then we've got this ra ra with respect to this clockwise clockwise so ra multiplied by x clockwise minus minus ra dot x anyway ma this is anti clockwise what plus ma anything else what about this udl so if you watch this udl the magnitude is 40 kN per meter so in 1 meter in 1 meter the total load acting is 40 kN so what is the span length this is this has been applied this for this 40 kN per meter has been applied for a span length of x meters so for x meters the udl acting is going to be 40 times of x simply 40 times of x kilo newton so that is the entire idea and this this 40x is acting right at the center you can say right at the center so what distance would it be from here if we try to explain this in a simplified manner let's say you've got a beam you've got a beam over here okay so you got a udl right and this distance is x okay you want to find the moment about this point this point so this is what this is 40 kilo newton per meter so if you want to replace this udl with a point load you have to apply a load centrally and this load is nothing but what 40 times of x so this is at a distance of how much this distance is half of x that is x by 2 as simple so if you take acting in the downward direction anti clockwise moment for that we need to apply a positive sign and the load is what 40x multiplied by how far from this point from this point that is x by 2 dot x by 
Okay, I hope you're getting the point. Anyway, anyway. Mm, uh, done. Now what? 40 into x by 2. So this also has been taken into account. What about this 80 kilo newton force? So this is the force and this is the perpendicular distance. Only this much. x minus 6. x minus 6 is going to give you this distance. This very small distance. If I can just write this. x minus 6. There you go. So 80 multiplied by x minus 6. And that is anti-clockwise movement. So it's going to be 80 times of x minus 6. Anything else? Okay, this is also left. So this is acting from the downward direction. Okay, so this is acting actually on a span length of, let me just write this. This is x and this is 4. So this is going to be x minus 4. Simply. Done. Let's rub this. Remember these points. If the UDL does not finish on the section, then extend it from both the directions. Okay. The system would still be in equilibrium, not to worry. So we are talking about this uniformly distributed load, which has been applied from the bottom. So the force magnitude is 40 kN per meter. So in one meter, in one meter, the load acting in the upward direction is how much that is 40 into x minus 4. That's it. And it is acting where? Centrally it is acting somewhere along this line. Centrally. Half of this. So this is x minus 4. So this distance in that case would be x minus 4 and it's half. So x minus 4 uh, divided by 2. Anyway, let's write this. That is x minus 4. And uh, where can we write this? Plus. Not minus. Look. Acting from the bottom with respect to this clockwise. Minus. So this is going to be 40 times of x minus 4 multiplied by. So this is where the load is acting. This distance is x minus 4 by 2. This is x minus 4. This is going to be x minus 4 by 2. So this is going to become x minus 4 divided by 2. Okay. And all of this is going to be equal to 0. Well, that's it. So this is how the moment equation has to be framed. What you need to do now is that... Uh, Take all of these things over to the right hand side and let us rewrite this. Mx is going to be equal to Okay. Okay, that's it. All of this positive, negative, 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 positive and that's it. Yes. Perfect. So this is our final moment equation. Right. And you know very well that this mx, mx is nothing but e i d2y over dx square. So what we'll do, we'll try to integrate this first. And let's see what happens. When you integrate this e i dy by over dx so d2y by dx square converts to dy by over dx and this is going to become r a dot x square by 2 minus m a dot x and uh, what else anything else okay 20 x square minus 20 x square becomes x cube and divided by 3 beautiful let me put a line okay this is for this region only the first three terms for this region only so there is there is what there is this ma there is this ra and there is this this much portion of the udl okay that's over minus minus 80 times of x minus 6 okay but we need to integrate square and divided by 3 not 3 but 2 simply okay what else align plus 20 times of x minus 4 cube divided by 3. That's it. This is how you need to integrate. And by the way, when you integrate, there always is a constant of integration. So plus Cy. Now what you need to do is you need to apply the boundary condition. You need to apply the boundary condition. So the first boundary condition, you know very well. 
as I have told you in the previous lecture also here that is at end A so we took the section from the left at x is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 the slope is 0 and the deflection is also 0 don't worry the slope is 0 so x is equal to 0 dA by by dx is equal to 0 0 0 0 okay even if you consider these terms just inside the bracket take a look don't worry about anything if you put the value of x is equal to 0 inside the bracket you are obviously going to have a value minus 6 and here you will have a value minus 4 so if you have negative values discard them right discard them straight away so you have to take all these terms only into the picture and even when you put them 0 0 0 and only c1 is left and here 0 is left so obviously when you put up all these values c1 is going to work out as 0 right now what we can do is we can again write this equation and we'll try to integrate this again until you have the deflection equation again this is going to be fairly simple um, better better to integrate this straight away e i y this is going to be r a x cube 3 2 is 6 minus m a x will become x square over 2 minus 20 this is going to be x power 4 divided by 4 into 3 is 12 that's it first three terms for a portion between a and c anyway minus this is going to be well uh, minus what 80 it will we can you can actually write this 40 80 by 2 is 40 40 times of x minus 6 cube divided by 3 done plus 20 x minus 4 power 4 divided by 4 3 is 12 so 4 3 is 12 again again here there will be a constant to integration c2 and if you just try to work this out at x is equal to 0 we know very well that the deflection is also going to be equal to 0 so this is 0 0 0 0 you don't have to worry about these terms as they return a negative value so discard them when you do that again the value of c2 which you will obtain is going to be equal to 0 so we now know very well what the value of c1 and c2 is so we can frame our moment not moment we, we can frame finally our slope and deflection equations so if you have no, not noted down anything so please note this down as i am about to rewrite the slope and moment equation not moment but deflection equations okay do note this down i'm rubbing it off Okay, so now let's start the calculation. So there are essentially two boundary conditions, one which we have applied. This boundary condition has already been applied. X is equal to zero, slope and deflection is equal to zero. So we got the values of C1 and C2. When you put the value of C1 and C2, so you got these final equations, right? Now, how to proceed? That is the main problem. What we'll try to do is we'll try to apply the second boundary condition on the second fixed end. That is that X is equal to eight, slope and deflection are again going to work out as zero. So if you watch, this is something which I have written, second boundary condition and let me plug in the value. So dy by dx is going to be equal to 0. So that 0 is equal to r x square. x is 8, 8, 64. 64 by 2 is 32. So that's 32 r a done minus 8 times of ma minus 8 times of ma and what else? 20 into 8 cube by 3. Where is the calculator? 20 into 8 cube divided by 3 and this is working out as 3413.33 plus minus minus 3413.33 done 40 into 8 minus 6 8 minus 6 is 2 2 square is 4 4 into 40 is 160 minus 160 plus so this is going to be 20 into 8 minus 4 is 4 4 cube so 20 into 4 cube divided by 3 so this is 664 26.66 anyway so this minus this minus this okay let me just calculate how much this much portion is so 426.66 minus 160 okay and minus 3413.33 this is going to work out as minus 3146 anyway that is minus value you can shift it over to here over to the right hand side or the left hand side let's say this is going to be 32 R A minus 8 M A is equal to 3146 3146 
0.66. So let's say guys, this is our equation number one. We need one more equation. Then let me check. 32 RA minus 8 MA. 32 RA minus 8 MA is equal to uh, 3146. Yeah. Good. Great. That's our first equation. How can we frame our second equation? That's also pretty simple. Again, you need to apply the boundary condition at x is equal to 8. Now the deflection is going to be equal to 0. Okay. Simple. This y will be 0. Over to the left hand side, this value will be 0. Is the equal to, what do you need to put? 8. 8 cube divided by 6. So here we go. 8 cube divided by 6. This is working out as 85.33. So 85.33 and this is R A. Okay. Minus 8 square. That is 64. 64 by 2 is 32 minus 32 M A. I'm pretty much sure you can do the calculation. I'll just write the final values. Let me go ahead and write them. The final values are. Okay. Let me write them. <coughs> minus 6826.66 minus 6826.66 what else minus 106.66 minus 106.66 and plus 426.66 plus 426.66 and these are the values essentially when you put the value of 8 over here 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 these three values that's it this is exactly what you would be getting and if you want to frame this final equation can be done very easily. This is going to be 85.33 RA minus 32 MA is equal to where are we? 6506.66 6506.66 and this is going to be our equation number 2. You just need to solve these two equations. It's that simple. Let me just show you. Let me just show you. Try the equation solver. Try the equation solver. Where is it? Go to mode for equation. Hit 5. This equation. Ax plus by is equal to c. Hit 1. And just plug in the values of a1, b1, c1. a1, b1, c1. And then a2, b2, c2 into this matrix. And that's it. That's done. Let us put the values. 32. What else? Minus 8. Where are we? 32 minus 8 and 3146. Minus 8. 3146.66 done then we've got 85.33 this over here then minus 32 <coughs> and 6506.66 and that's it this is what you'll get 142.48 so approximately this is 142.5 okay so the value of ra which we've obtained is RA is 142.5 kilo Newton. Secondly, the value of MA or MB, what is this? MA, right? 176.6 and let me check in my solution. 176.6, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, 176.6, correct. RB, not RB, what? MA. 176.6 kilonewton. So these are the two values. One is the fixing support while the other is the fixing moment at fixed support A. Okay, how to approach this further? Let's see now. Let's see. It's taking a lot of space, you know. Where can I make some space now? Okay, so moment at fixed ends, only at end A we have worked out. Something else needs to be worked out. What can be done now? We need to make some space. Watch. Okay. Let's, let's do this together. So, we've got this. One second. Let's come off. <coughs> okay let us try to make this diagram once again okay then only we'll be able to work out how many things which we we have calculated so it's it's something like this we'll start from over here 
let's make it here so this is the beam right there is a fixing moment over here which I guess we've already calculated that is moment at a 176.6 kilo Newton not kilo Newton whatever written this is kilo Newton meters oh man there are so many things which you need to take care of how much 176.6 so 176.6 kilo Newton meter and there is this reaction obviously this is 142.5 142.5 kilo Newton okay anything else so you've got the UDL for a certain portion of the beam you've got the UDL this is end A this is C and over here this is end D where we have a point load of magnitude 80 kilo Newton and there is a reaction obviously this is a reaction RB and then again there is a fixing moment like this this is MB so these are the two unknowns which one which we now need to calculate that that means again we need to frame two equations and these two equations can be framed with the help of simple statics how watch this is fairly simple I'm sure that you are going to get this point very easily so the first equation which we are going to apply is summation of all the forces where in the y direction are going to be equal to zero when you do that so these two forces are upwards that means 142.5 plus rb okay anything else so there is this 80 kilo newton downwards so minus 80 as it is downwards this udl is having a magnitude of 40 kilo newton in a meter so in one meter the load is 40 so this distance over here we know very well this is four meters this is two meters okay the, between these two points it's four between these two points it's two and between these two points it's two again so as far as UDL is concerned 40 multiplied by 4 will give you 160 in the downward direction that means minus 160 is equal to 0 you just have to solve this equation and let me just show you how much the answer would be shift 9 3 and done this is 142.5 142.5 minus 80 minus 160 and that's working out as 97.5 you take it over to the right hand side this minus value will become positive yeah so rb rb is working out as positive 97.5 kilo Newton. so that's it okay now in the same manner what you can do is for this beam only you can take the moments about any specific point about any point so what we'll do is we'll take the moment about point A is equal to 0 you can take about any point you can take the moment about B also is equal to 0 go ahead and do that and ensure whether your answer and my answer is up matching or not okay if you take the moment about 0 moment about A is equal to 0 in that case this force will not be taken since it is passing through this point A itself okay we'll only talk about this moment it is anti-clockwise that is anti-clockwise we'll take it as positive 176.6 and and this moment what is this moment this is clockwise minus mb okay and with respect to a this is the force so this is sort of making an anti-clockwise moment again positive so rb multiplied by this distance that is 8 so this is going to be 8 times of rb then this force 80 in the downward clockwise sense so 80 multiplied by this distance this is 4 plus 2 is 6 so minus of 80 multiplied by 6 and this UDL acting right at the center you can say okay virtually but not practically so this is how much total load acting in the downward direction in one meter it is 40 so for four meters it is going to be 160 acting in the downward sense let's say so this distance is 2 half of 4 is 2 so 160 multiplied by 2 again clockwise sense 160 multiplied by 2 and all of this is going to be equal to 0 let me make a check quickly whether we have got all the forces or not 97.5 into 8 oh we forgot something we forgot something rb 97.5 into 8 let me just see moment about a is equal to 0 where is this 97.5 load okay 97.5 into 8 is this one <laughs> 
So this RB actually, we, we have already calculated this. 97.5 into, yeah, this is 97.5 kilorotins basically. So you need to plug in this value. Anyway, apart from this, I mean, before calculation, let us check the equation. Then minus MB, yes, that's correct. Okay, 80 into 6 minus sign, minus 160 into 2, yeah. Yes, we've pretty much covered everything. Yeah, we've pretty much covered everything. And now let us just plug in the values and uh, how to do this. Okay, so we will start from here. 176 plus, this is unknown to us guys. Okay, this is unknown. And all the calculations will be over here. Right, whatever calculation is over in the this side only. And that is going to be your answer because MB has to be taken to the right. Plus, 8 times of RB, 8 into 97.5 done minus 80 into 6 done minus 160 into 2 and yes that's it it is 156 let me check let me check perfect 156 156 okay this is a, a well by the way this is 176.6 so the answer is 156.6 MB is working out as 156.6 kilo Newton and I will not forget this time kilo Newton meter okay beautiful right so first two portions are over moment at the fixed ends reaction at the fixed supports RA RB moment MA MB all of this these things have been covered up Final part, deflection at the center. Let's let's do this. Final part. Deflection at the center. Deflection at the center. So we have taken the section from the left. That means somewhere here, right at the center, we need to find. That means what we'll do is we'll put the value of x is equal to 4. Where is the deflection equation? This is our deflection equation. So Y is supposed to be calculated. The EI, well, this has been given to us. I forgot to write this down. EI has been given as, this flexural rigidity has been given as 15,000 kilo Newton meter square. Let me check. <coughs> 15,000. <000. coughs> yes, that's it. So let me plug in all the values. 15,000 times of Y. This is going to be 15,000 times of Y is equal to watch this r a into x cube by 6 so put the value of x is equal to 4 so r a what is r a 142.5 so 142.5 into x cube over 6 4 cube over 6 4 cube over 6 first bracket then there is a negative sign negative sign bracket again what ma x square by 2 what is ma ma is 176.6 176.6 multiplied by x square 4 square by 2 <coughs> into 4 square all of this divided by 2 then we've got a negative sign again minus minus bracket 5 into x power 4 by 3 x is 4 okay so 5 into 4 power 4 by 3 close the bracket next minus sign again minus sign again so when you as soon as you put the value of x is equal to 4 you first need to realize whether you have to take these two consider these two terms or not because when you put the value of x is equal to 4 you need to cover all the forces acting on this much portion only you don't have to worry about these forces right okay so you have to you have to actually neglect these terms <coughs> and one more way of working out working this out is if you put the value of x is equal to 4 inside the bracket 4 minus 6 is minus 2 reject 4 minus 4 obviously 0 so you don't have to consider these terms literally and then only the calculation is left once you do this calculation you will get the y's value at the center and this is going to precisely work out as 0. Point, negative of 0. 0.0 let me see 0. 0.021 I guess yeah minus 0. 0.021 meters negative value is indicating a case of downward deflection that's it downward deflection or displacement whatever you can say right so you can also convert this this is going to be 21 millimeter 
so that is the final answer okay now <clears throat> as i told you that there are two approaches one sectioning from the left when you do that you observe that the section does not cut this udl so what we did is we extended the udl from both the direction from the from the top also we extended it and from the bottom also we extended it there is another approach what you can do is you can take the section from the right in that case it is obviously going to cut the udl somewhere here so there is no point in extending the udl that is also quite easy the solution is right here watch this video for 10 seconds more and pause the video rather and take a note of the solution take a screenshot also okay you can solve it later right <coughs> so guys i'll see you again in the next video and uh, there we are going to be taking up the case of a couple okay somewhere along the length of the beam there is going to be a couple acting and based on that scenario we'll be working out the uh, fixing moments as well as the reaction at supports don't worry that is also going to be very awesome so i planned 3 to 4 videos on fixed beam and then we'll switch over to continuous beams right so guys that was all for today i'll see you again in the next video until then take care have a nice day keep learning keep watching and thank you